الله 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 كنتم كي رأوا ما تيقول الجالس تأمرون بمعروف وتدخون عن المنكر وتؤمنون بالله. yang bermaksud kalian merupakan umat yang terbaik yang dibangkitkan oleh Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. You are the best of nation. Evolve for mankind. Itu adalah suatu penghormatan. Tetapi saya percaya majoriti kita pernah dengar. Kalau tak pernah tengok mungkin. Itu filem Spiderman. Masih pernah kan kita? Tak pun kita mau besar dengan Captain Spiderman kan? Mesti pernah cuba berlaku nak jadi Spiderman kan? Okay? Di mana kata-kata Pak Cik kepada Peter Parker? Itu Pak Cik dia, Ben. Ketika nak hantar dia dalam kereta, Pak Cik dia kata apa? With great power come great responsibility. Sepuluh malam kata nak bawa dia balik. Yeah? Dia kata, I will pick you up here at the right spot 10 o'clock tonight. Tetapi kepada Allah dia mati dibunuh. Pakcik dia. Of course hari ini ceramah bukan pasal Spiderman bukan. Bukan. So nanti nanti orang orang rasa eh pelik lah ni. Ini ceramah Abu Bakar Nahi muka tapi cerita pasal Spiderman tak. Saya cuba cara saya nak berkongsi dengan sahabat-sahabat adalah iaitu untuk membawa satu naratif yang kita semua biasa tetapi bagaimana sometimes di situ ini juga ada kaitan. Itu bila Peter Parker diberitahu oleh pakcik dia, Ben, bahawa with great power come great responsibility, kemudian dia meninggal. Sebenarnya, ini juga ada kaitan dengan apa yang kita nak sampaikan pada hari ini. Iaitu, bila kita kata dengan kuasa yang lebih hebat, sebenarnya dengan kuasa itu juga, ini juga melambangkan suatu kemuliaan. Betul? Contoh, seseorang yang bergelar CEO, adakah dia sama dengan seorang kerani Tetap bekerja di organisasi yang sama Tetapi With the title itself Ianya adalah suatu Owner Jadi di sini Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala sebut Kuntum kairah umati Ukhrijalinas You are the best Dia bukan second best Runners up Bukan The best Meaning Ianya adalah satu Owner satu penghormatan dari Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Tetapi saya nak ubah sedikit nasihat pacik dia. Ben Parker itu kepada kita Parker. Dia kata with great power. Saya ubah sesuai dengan topik kita. Iaitu with great honor come great responsibility and great accountability. Betul ke tuan-tuan dan puan-puan? Orang kadang-kadang tengok bos ni Kati dia masuk kurang tu kan? Betul? Mentah-mentah dia boss kan? Kati dia masuk kurang tu Yes? The fact that he is the boss Dia boleh masuk kurang tu Tetapi responsibility dia berbeza Dan bila responsibility dia berbeza Maka accountability dia is higher Likewise Bila mana Allah memberikan suatu kemuliaan dia kepada kita You are the best of nation Dia tak datang just because you were born as a Muslim No How can you be honored? Islam telah melarang benda itu Di mana Allah SWT berfirman dalam surah Al-Hujurat Surah ke-49 ayat 13 Ya ayyukhan nas Inna kharaknakum min zakari wa unsa Wa ja'anakum syu'uba Wa kabayla lita'arafu Inna akramakum Inna Allahi atkahu Wahai manusia Sesungguhnya kalian telah dijadikan daripada seorang lelaki dan seorang wanita Dan diciptakan bersukupua Berbilang bangsa Berbilang-bilang kabilah dan agar kamu mengenali satu sama lain Dan terbaik di kalangan kamu adalah yang paling bertakwa Bukan yang paling pandai berceramah Bukan Tetapi yang paling bertakwa How can you just be honor Just because you were born as a Muslim Where you have no choice No You are being honor for your actions Oh, saya lelaki maka saya mulia No Saya wanita maka saya lebih mulia No Oh, saya Cina Saya ada 5,000 tahun ketamadunan So, I become more honor No I have no choice. Saya tak ada pilihan dilahir sebagai Cina. Tuan-tuan perempuan tak ada pilihan lahir sebagai Melayu ke India ke. Tak ada. So, there is nothing being proud about that that you have no choice. Tetapi, you can be proud with your own action. With the decisions that you make. Maka Allah kata, you are the best of nation. Bukan blanket statement. Tetapi Allah menghadirkan 
satu qualification how can you become the best dan ini yang Umar Ibn Khattab tuan-tuan dan puan-puan yang Umar Ibn Khattab radhiyallahu anhu dia taksirkan ayat ini iaitu Umar dia kata barang siapa dulu saya sebelum Islam bila saya tengok barang siapa saya tak faham serius Eh, ada kadang-kadang dalam ayat Quran kan Bila tadi Muhammad tu Barang siapa yang mengerjakan ni Barang siapa yang mengerjakan Saya fikir barang siapa tu Tak faham Biasalah Pemahaman berbeza kan Umar Ibn Khattab Radiyallahu Anhu Dia berkata Barang siapa Sesiapa jua Yang ingin Termasuk dalam golongan Yang dimuliakan oleh Allah Whosoever Meaning is an open invitation You boleh jadi budak You boleh jadi hamba But Umar ditaksirkan ayat ini dan dia faham ayat ini dia kata siapa yang nak termasuk dalam golongan yang dimuliakan oleh Allah menjadi yang terbaik maka laksanakan syarat ini, perintah ini. perintah dalam ayat itu ayat ini apa? iaitu ta'muruna bima'ruf kamu mengajak kepada yang ma'ruf watanhauna amin mungka dan kamu mencegah kemungkaran lihat kan? Eh? tuan-tuan perempuan kita bukan masuk dalam kelas bahasa Arab tetapi bila wa contoh wal asr ina insana la virus ila allazina amanu wa amilus solihat dia boleh bawa pengertian dan dia juga boleh bawa pengertian atau tetapi dalam konteks ini dia bukan membawa pengertian atau dia membawa pengertian dan kalau dalam bahasa Melayu kita faham kan beza antara atau dengan dan eh? iaitu kalau atau saya Makan, awak makan apa? Awak makan nasi atau mie? Either one Betul? Tapi bila kata Saya makan nasi dan mie Itu adalah nasi ambung Betul kan? Oh, dia makan dua-dua sekali Now, Maksudnya, bila Allah SWT kata Ta'muru Nabi Ma'ruf Watan hauna animuka Maksudnya, dua-dua sekali And, bukan dua saja Ada satu lagi Watuk minu Nabi Allah Tuan-tuan dan puan-puan, ayat ini If we understand, kita akan berebut nak mencapai kemuliaan itu. Because kemuliaan ini, zero cost. It's up to your intentions, up to what you want, and how high you want to go in terms of jannah, the level of jannah. Kenapa Allah SWT letak tiga kat situ? Tak buru dan bima'ruf, wa tanhaw na anin mungkar, wa tu'minu na bila. Bila saya tengok tafsir dia, subhanallah wa ta'ala wa ta'ala. Dan tafsir ini kita semua boleh baca. It's so beautiful Dia seperti sometimes Kita ada permata dalam tangan kita Bersama we just Sebab kita tak ada ilmu Jadi kita rasa lah ni batu je Kita campak Tapi batu yang kita rasa kita nak campak itu Bagi orang yang tahu menilai Itu adalah berlian Itu adalah permata Sebab so, kita don't have the technology We don't have the knowledge to evaluate and to appreciate it Bila kita baca ni tuan-tuan dan puan-puan Ajak kepada yang pahamu Cegah yang bukan dan beriman kepada Allah Dia hanya spesifikly kepada orang yang beriman Lihat eh? Orang yang belum Islam Boleh ke tidak mereka buat amal makruf Mengajak kepada kebaikan Boleh You have a lot of activists Human strike activists Women strike activists Animals activists right? Mengajak kepada kebaikan They can do that Tetapi neraca kita kita bercakap dari bentuk paradigma kita, value kita Makruf yang tertinggi Bukan ditentukan oleh manusia So kalau kita dekat sini hampir lebih kurang 20 orang Kalau saya kata What is the most important thing to you in life? Kesemua 20 orang mungkin akan memberikan nilai berbeza Jikalau mengambil pendapat peribadi Dan kehendak diri dia, betul? Tetapi kalau ditanya tentang As a Muslim, apa yang tertinggi Dia akan ikut satu standard Standard Quran dan Sunnah Sebab tak mungkin Bila Allah dengan Rasulnya telah mengatakan sesuatu Lalu kita ada pilihan yang lain Bro Fidah boleh cakap ke? Allah sendiri Bro Fidah Dalam surah Al-Azhar Surah 33 ayat 36 Allah kata Tidak boleh untuk seorang yang beriman yang apabila Allah dan Rasulnya telah membuat suatu ketetapan, lalu mereka mempunyai pilihan yang lain. Tak boleh. And that 
is what it means to be a Muslim. When Allah says this, this. Allah kata, I love this person. Then you should love that person. When Allah says, no, this is what I dislike. You cannot like it. A no, desire you. Okay, but... Tak boleh. You can. Okay? Jadi, nilai kita dalam Islam makruf yang tertinggi, Nabi SAW telah mengatakan dalam sebuah hadis yang masyur. Bagi kita bersabda, sesungguhnya iman itu ada 60 cabang, 60 tingkatan. Dalam hadis yang lain mengatakan, ada 70. Yang paling tinggi adalah, La ilaha illallah. Maksudnya, kalau kita makruf yang terbaik, the highest of all, bagi kita adalah La ilaha illallah Dan Allah Kualifatkan Statement tadi Dengan satu firmannya Cantiknya tuan-tuan perempuan I'm, Saya tak mau cakap shock sendiri I want to invite you Selepas kuliah ni dan sebagainya Balik ke the day after this You all go back and explore You all go back and explore Sebab for me as a reward Mungkin you all born as a Muslim You all appreciate juga tetapi sometimes the level of appreciation are different. When you are used to, you know, barang-barang toys are us, yeah? how can you appreciate the toys from Pasar Malam School Ringgit? You can. I do have toys too. But I do have the toys from Pasar Malam School Ringgit. You all are born like with toys are us. You know, Play-Doh. I bukan main Play-Doh. I play doh. <laughs> like, so it's different. You all go back and explore benda tu And you will see, find it so beautiful When you read the Quran, we understand it Not necessarily with Arabic You dah baca dalam bahasa Arab You baca dalam bahasa Melayu, bahasa English, Chinese The language that you understand It's not exactly the Quran But it's far better than you reading the Arabic only Without any, any understanding Allah berfirma dalam surah Al-Fusilat Surah 41 ayat 33 وَمَنْ أَسَّمُ قَوْلًا مِمَنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ Wow, Masya Allah Siapakah yang lebih baik perkataannya daripada mereka yang menyeru kepada Allah? The best speech and the one who call people to Allah. Tadi Nabi kata, iman ada 60, 70 cabang. Yang paling tinggi, La ilaha illallah. Dan Nabi SAW kata, yang paling rendah, iman rendah adalah menyingkirkan halangan dari jalanan. Menyingkirkan halangan. Maksudnya, dia ada tingkatan dia. The makruf. Fight for human rights, is it good? Good. Fight for animals, right? Is it good? Good. Fight for rights, right? 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 Is good. But first, let's talk about God's right. As a Muslim, as a Muslim, kita dalam perbincangan in any equation, anything. Bila I kata anything, it means anything and everything, without any single exceptions. Bila everything and anything, maksudnya the way kita bercakap, apa keputusan kita buat, apa juga nilai kita. Equation dia adalah Allah first Allah first If you put Allah second Or Allah third Or na'uzubillah If Allah is not in the equation You do whatever you want There is no value There is no fixed value What makes good good What makes bad bad Contoh If I were to ask What make Example What make bribery bad Who think is bad Well, you think it's bad. But for me, who are bribing people, I got the project. Is it good for me? It's good for me. Right? What makes smoking good? What makes smoking bad? For people who smoke, they might say good. For people who don't smoke, they might say bad. But what is your guideline? Yastik. We are talking about yastik. Jadi, bila Nabi SAW kata, Iman ada beberapa cabang, and the highest adalah La ilaha illallah, itu adalah amal ma'ruf yang terbaik. That is the highest. Yang belum Islam boleh buat? Yes, they can do it. They can do, so, jom lah, kita buat baik, jom lah, kita cegah rasuah. Very good. Jom lah, kita cegah ni pecah amal. Jom, that's very good. As a Muslim, we support. In totality. No problem. Tapi dah ayah sebenarnya lah, ilah Allah. Non-Muslim boleh buat? Yes. Non-Muslim juga boleh cegah kemungkaran tak? Boleh. Boleh. Obviously, boleh cegah rasuah, boleh cegah ni, boleh cegah ni. Okay, no problem. Tetapi, Menurut Islam Apakah kemungkaran yang paling teruk Yang Allah Tak akan ampunkan Jika seseorang itu mati dalam keadaan itu Syirik Syirik Simple Syirik Just one Just one Syirik 
Surah An-Nisa surah ke-4 ayat 48 dan surah An-Nisa surah ke-4 ayat 116 iaitu syirik. Yaitu Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala berfirman, barang siapa yang meninggal dalam keadaan menyekutukan Allah maka sesekali tidak akan Allah ampunkan dia. No way. No. Kalau yang belum Islam boleh buat amal ma'ruf nahi mungkar, but why can't they become the best in the sight of Allah? Ingatlah, bila saya sebut the best of nation in the sight of Allah is different from in the sight of human being. Kalau kita tanya hari ini, according to human, manusia pada hari ini, who should be categorized as the best? Yang ramai followers kat IG. Dekat Mesos. Bukankah hari ini manusia menilai bahawa oh, dia mesti betul. Dia kan ramai followers. Dia kan popular. Oh, tak, 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 tak. tak. Cannot just judge by followers. Kena judge by dia punya duit. Kalau macam tu, Elon Musk lah. But then, the fact is, he's not, you know, kata apa, the best in everything kan? So, what is the best? Maksudnya, tuan-tuan perempuan, I want to share with you guys. Kalau kita sanggup tak berfikir, to live up to the expectations of Allah are far easier compared to live up to the expectation of human being. It's far easier. Because to please Allah is so simple because Allah has already mentioned to us specifically how you can please Allah. Tapi human being, I boleh please brother ni. Oh bro, you suka apa? I suka ni. You suka, okay bro, you suka tim bola apa bro? Okay, kalau dia macam tu masuk gua lah. <laughs> Ini kalau tak MU, asa ke? <laughs> Betul tak? <laughs> kalau... kalau kalau dia top of the table, Liverpool lah, bro. Eh. Dia, dia akan lain kan? Now, kalau dia MU, kawan kat sebelah Liverpool. So, saya nak postkan hadis dia apa? No. Dia akan kata, no, my team is the best. Oh, no, no, my team have a rich, richer history. The best. You are not the best. Dah berapa tahu tak menang liga. Right? So, susah. Tetapi, when we go with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala punya expectation, simple. Yet, not yet Muslim ini. They cannot become the best in the sight of Allah. They cannot become the best in the sight of Allah. Sebab apa? The last condition to mereka tak ada. What is the last condition? Wa tu minu nabila. Wa tu minu nabila. Kita kadang-kadang kita rasa, Alham, percaya pada Allah is like, you know, you know, I met some of our Muslim, dia rasa is like, as if, percaya pada Allah tu is not like the big things, you know. It's like, Allah, skip me hal lah. No bro Serius, I don't kata Why? I I was questioned By seorang tiktoker Tiktoker lah Kita panggil dia tiktoker lah Budak belasan tahu Tapi wah, Masya Allah 300,000 followers Budak belasan tahu Okay Dia kata, you know Why we want to have that kind of Superiority complex That you know Just because we are Muslim We are being proud I said, we are problem tau If let's say we as a Muslim We are not proud What when we have we achieved? The biggest achievement for us as a Muslim Bukan saya kata that in terms of technology We should not achieve No, go all out The biggest achievement adalah We believe in Allah Itu paling tinggi La ilaha illallah Because paradigma, perspective, value kita Is based on Quran dan Sunnah We don't base it on other people No, no, according to me You are not the best lah You know Because you guys, you know What do you guys invent? Hmm Because achievement is to believe in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Dia kata, what should we be proud? No Watuk minu nabila Nabi SAW bersabda Bahawa Sesuatu Yang ringan di lisan Tetapi berat di timbangan Iaitu kalimah La ilaha illallah Dan hadis yang lain Nabi SAW bersabda Barang siapa yang akhir kalamnya Adalah La ilaha illallah Pasti akan masuk jannah Wow La ilaha illallah Adalah kalimah yang akan confirmkan kita masuk jannah And you kata What is the big deal? <laughs> Let me tell you Bro and sis Nak perumpamaan simple je I don't care You punya kunci dibuat daripada Emas solid gold 99.9% gold 
or 916 or aluminium, I don't care. How big, I don't care. Tetapi, kalau that is not the right key, even to enter that room, mahal macam mana pun, you tetap tak boleh masuk pintu tu. Human perception. Tetapi, mungkin kita pakai toothpick ya. Orang kata, toothpick compare dengan gobar, compare dengan kunci yang dibuat daripada emas. How to compare that? Tetapi, with that toothpick, I can enter the room with treasure. What you have to say now? Sebab itu, cara kita berfikir adalah based on Quran dan Sunnah, apa yang Allah dengan rasulnya dah sebut, iaitu Amar Ma'ruf Nahi Mungkar. Hari ini, tuan-tuan dan puan-puan, sahabat-sahabat, the sad part is, the sad part, dah cakap the good part, mesti ada sad part. The sad part is, kita Muslim, bukan kata semua, ramai, kita ada waktu minum dan bila, that's why we pray. Amar Ma'ruf, ada sikit-sikit, kalau ikut kata Piramdi, jarang, jarang. Nahi Mungkar It's very rare It's very rare So itu kata-kata guru saya Syekh Hussein ni Dia kata Talking Muslim everywhere Practice Muslim very rare Maksudnya kita ada Tuk Minu dah bilang Dah bagus lah Kita ada Amal Ma'ruf Nak ajak kawan solat You all jangan jawab saya tau Anak kita sama-sama bersama And I'm not Mungkin kadang-kadang saya mungkin akan sound like sarcastic Tapi Itu je sikit je Sebab sometimes macam Allah sebut dalam Quran Dia kadang-kadang dia ada sarcastic sikit Kan? Supaya kita berfikir Ada orang Itu style Itu style dia Contoh dalam Quran surah Tur Surah ke-52 ayat 35-36 Allah berfirman dan bertanya kepada orang yang menafikan kewujudan Allah Allah kata Adakah mereka ini menciptakan ataupun diciptakan? Is that how to answer that question? Nah? This question saya dah post banyak dah kepada atheist And none of them can answer Sebab dia sebenarnya dia tak ada no god Okay, no god Allah give you one challenge on You answer this and settle Do you create yourself or somebody created you? To answer you create yourself is insanity Meaning, you have to choose the letter one, which is very obvious, which is somebody created you. When somebody created you, and yet you deny there is no creator. That is absurdity. So, Tuan Tuan Puan, kita hari ini ada solat, lepas itu kita ada taskiran dan sebagainya. Tak ada angkat tangan jawab tau. Just for us to ponder muhasabah. Kita ada kelik-kelik tadi, ramai yang datang kan. How many of us invite them untuk datang solat? Bukan dengan taskirah Mungkin tak suka video semua pun Tapi takkan dia tak suka dengan solat kan I cannot ask that everyone to die Dia pun Dia say but okay, okay But what I mean is that Kita cakap something very simple je Kita sesama muslim Ada tak kita Eh jom kita pergi solat Simple Amal baru Jom kita solat Itu belum lagi Nak nak cegah kemungkaran tau Kadang-kadang kita nampak kemungkaran Ya Jangan jaga tepi kain orang Kubur masing-masing Tak bisa belum mati dah ingat umur Bagus lah Ingat umur tu segala kelazatannya Mati nah, Tapi tuan-tuan dan puan That is our state today In which we have Tuk minum Nabila Percaya pada Allah Tetapi The two Amal Ma'ruf Nabi Muka Kita sebagai Muslim We are a bit far behind you Dan itu yang menyebabkan Hari ini Umat Islam To be honest Adakah kita kelihatan seperti umat yang terbaik As Allah mentioned in the Quran no. When Allah is mentioning something Saya nak Saya sebab ini adalah tempat corporate And tempat corporate You know Dia punya intelligent dan sikit Now tuan-tuan dan puan Let's think about this When Allah mentioned something very clear Like for example You are the best But yet today world We do not be perceived or seen To be like the best Contradiction When there is a contradiction between the reality of today and what Allah has mentioned, Allah kita percaya. Wasabi na wala tona. Apa yang Allah kata tu betul. Meaning something is wrong with us. And tadi mama, it's not really matter about you know what's wrong with us with you. Okay, it's not about you tahu betul tak. One thing is that you know what's wrong. That's good. But recognizing you are wrong, recognizing you have a problem, that is the next step. Cukup? No! Tak cukup! 
A lot of people, kau tahu tak aku masak dengan kau? Aku tahu. Aku selalu lembat sebab aku selalu bangun lembat. Okay. So, kau dah tahu masak dengan kau. Kau recognize. Okay, good. So, macam mana? Tak apa ni, so aku bangun lembat lagi. <laughs> Knowing one thing, recognizing one thing, not enough. But, to overcome the issue. Contoh, I mean, ada IT, Encik Anna Ferry kat sini. You know, you you diagnose, you dialysis benda tu, you dah diagnose, ada problem. Okay, you recognize. Ya, yeah, ya, yeah, ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. Ada bug dalam sistem kita. Ada virus dalam sistem kita. Okay. Thank you. Assalamualaikum. It doesn't happen that way. Dia akan pergi kepada, okay, how to overcome. Macam mana untuk pastikan sistem berjalan lancar. Now, the problem is, we know we have problem. We know exactly. We know we have not been performed to our best as Allah expect to be a Muslim. Itu yang Imam Syawakani sebut. Last time saya confused. Saya pun confused. Bila Allah kata, you are the best of nation, saya kata, apa yang Muslim the best? Kan? Takkanlah Allah nak kata the best in terms of negativity. Contoh, rasuah kadar paling tinggi di kalangan orang Islam. Tengok pornografi paling tinggi di kalangan orang Islam. Lepas tu rasuah paling tinggi, bosia, bojan. Takkanlah Allah kata that one is the best? No! Then, when we look at the Muslim, kita tengok cermin pun, best tu. <laughs> Confused. Akhirnya, Allah temukan saya dengan satu kitab taksir yang berjudul Fatul Qadir yang ditulis oleh Imam Ash-Shawkani rahimahullah. Bila dia taksirkan ayat ini, tuan-tuan perempuan, wah, lega. Lega. Memang lega. Lega because is that you dah sakit lama and then you found the medicine the cure is like wow dan bila Imam Syafi'i dia kata umat Islam memang merupakan umat yang terbaik the best of nation as long selagi mana mereka melaksanakan syarat-syarat yang Allah letakkan di sambungan ayat itu iaitu ta'muru nabi ma'ruf wa tanhauna 'anil munkar wa tu'minu nabila tetapi sambungan dia best iaitu tetapi umat Islam akan daripada yang ini jadi yang ini apabila umat Islam berhenti melaksanakan syarat-syarat tadi as ourselves tak payah update status as ourselves how many of us involved in amal ma'ruf nahi munkar just think throughout our life as a muslim 20 30 40 years 50 years or we are too busy with our work okay menjaga amanah syarikat bekerja Bagus, that's one thing. Tetapi how about other part? How much? Amal ma'ruf na'i muka. You have a lot of colleagues yang belum Islam. Kadang-kadang kita nampak kemungkaran. But, apa yang telah kita buat? We know. Kita tahu satu fakta very clear, eh? That anybody yang memilih agama selain daripada Islam bukan berada video yang cakap Allah Nabi. Surah Ali Ibrahim seraya ketiga ayat 85 Barang siapa yang memilih agama selain daripada Islam Ianya sesekali tidak akan diterima oleh Allah SWT And will be rejected Of course Tapi kalanya because We have the confidence that Islam adalah agama yang benar Inna dina inna Allah Islam Sometimes people perceive us as being arrogant I dah kena nama berapa kali Oh for those You are too arrogant, you are too ego to claim that only your religion is correct. Saya kata, when I stated a fact from a book that I believe is from Allah, from the only creator, when I stated a fact that I believe is a fact, is true, and if that is considered as arrogant or ego, then can you say that I'm an egoistic guy or arrogant guy just because I say it? And I admit that I am a man. The fact is I'm a man, right? Is it a fact or not? Yes. Kau kurang masih meragui kejadian saya. <laughs> Tidak kan? Ada kali yang memerhatikan saya lelaki itu saya ego. Ada kali yang memerhatikan saya ini adalah seorang lelaki yang ada jambut. Ada kah saya ego? Ada kah saya arrogant? Ada kah saya sombong? No, I'm just stating the fact. Now the problem is not me. The problem is sometimes you cannot accept the fact. You ready to live a life of lies rather than to live a life facing the truth. Sebab tu ada peribahasa dalam bahasa Cina. Khas untuk wanita. Iaitu, it's better to live in denial than to face the truth. Ini berkaitan dengan suami mereka baik kayu tiga. 
Yes, it's a Chinese saying. You, you, it's better for you to live a life of lies. Okay, don't face the truth. Biarlah dia nak buat apa kat luar. Jadi dia balik, dia suami you. Itu je. So sometimes people live rather, honestly speaking, I know uh, some might be recorded, but I, I'm okay. The fact is, don't have one point. You believe, kita semua believe, Islam. Inna dina inna wahi Islam. Surah Ali Imran, surah yang ketiga, ayat 19. Sesungguhnya agama, the only religion, yang Allah akan terima adalah Islam. And yet, we have so many colleagues of ours yang kita dah kerja sama rapat. 5 years, 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. So good, so nice kan, you know that? But we know kan, what will be the final about? Kita, ramai orang datang ke sini, kata, bro, tak nak nak cakap, bro, nanti nak cakap, bro. Kan nanti dia terasa macam mana. Okay. Itu Islam memang suruh kita jangan sakitkan hati orang. Memang. Do you think a doctor is a good doctor? Bila dia dah diagnose, pesakit tu ada masalah yang boleh disembuhkan dengan mengambil ubat. Tetapi the doctor choose to be silent. The person who is silent, when they saw an evil, they are as evil as the evil does. You cannot become a good doctor Again, since, you know, tadi tak kenalkan ada bahagian IT kat sini. Do you think an IT department is a good department when they already diagnose the problem, but they are silent about the solutions? And they don't give the solutions. And don't you know This is who we are today. We know our friends. Kita tahu mereka ada satu penyakit, very chronic, eh? lebih chronic daripada COVID. Shirk. Betul ke tak? Do we have the medicine for that? We have the medicine. Siapa kata kita tak? Then we have the medicine. Tentera perempuan, don't think beyond. Tapi bro, when they accept, you know, Tentera perempuan, your if let's say we are a doctor, our role as a doctor is just to prescribe a medicine, a treatment. Orang tu nak datang ke tak nak datang, orang tu nak makan ke tak nak makan ubat tu, it's none of your business. Sebab itu, kalau apa-apa surgery pun, mana pun doktor tu dah diagnose, oh, this guy, you have to perform your surgery now, now, now. Tapi ada kan doktor terus pergi bius dia dan pedang? No. Still have need the consent letter. Betul? Consent letter. Like Pastor Nara Bumpuan, we already diagnose our colleague yang ada syirik. Takkan kita nak kata Husnul Zohan sangat, kita kata, ala bro, mana kita tahu niat mereka, mana tahu mereka dah muslim. I like that type of Muslim <laughs> But we know it's very rare that, you know, it's a bit impossible. Sedangkan dia pergi church, dia pergi toko, dia masih pakai alat sembahyang dia. It's not that kita tak respect. Tuan-tuan pun pasangkan, kita lebih rela menjaga hati dia daripada dia terluka di dunia. To know the truth. Rather, kita lebih rela kita jaga hati daripada menjaga akhirat mereka. I share with you guys some of my experience here. Kami jumpa ramai yang not yet Muslim, yang belum Muslim. Ada yang memang dah minta sangat dalam Islam, Alhamdulillah. Semalam pun ada dua orang, dua orang dah masuk Islam, Alhamdulillah. And then, kebaikan mereka, at some station, mereka memang nak Islam. So, bila kami tanya, Okay, so, since there's nothing that you dislike about Islam, so what stop you from embracing Islam now? They can tell you, no, I love my parents so much. I don't want them to get hurt. So I think, and since they're already old, let them die first. Not only I embrace Islam. Remember betul. This is very common. Common. Let them die first, so they do not know. Okay? Then, when they, after they die, then I embrace Islam, nobody will get hurt. Saya kata, that is very noble of you. You tak nak sakitkan hati, mama, mama. Itu aja yang Islam. Very good. Tapi saya kata, do you realize there are at least minimum two problem with your statement just now? A problem. Number one, you say, wait for them to die. Can you check your phone, please? Check for what? Go to your Google Calendar. Okay, then. Tengok you ada apa-apa appointment tak dengan malaikat mu. Have the Malaika all give you any instruction that who will die first? They die first or you die first? Oh, I never thought about that. Okay, that's number one. So what's the second? The second is, why you want to become Muslim? 
not because I have learned and studied about Islam and I found out that Islam is the truth. Okay, not merely because Islam is the truth. You believe Islam is the truth that can lead you to Jannah, to paradise, right? You want to go to paradise, right? Oh yes, yes, for sure. And you don't want to go to hellfire, right? Yes. I'm a bit confused here. How can you say you love your mom and your dad? And yet, you're willing to see them die as a non-Muslim and let them go to hell and you go to paradise alone. I'm confused now. So, Pastor Leo. Oh. Alright. I never thought about that. I say, at least now, when you become a Muslim, you have a chance to talk to them about Islam, show a good example of being a Muslim. Either they're going to accept or not, it's none of your business. But at least you do not live a life of regret. Bila mak you dah meninggal, bila papa you dah meninggal, lepas tu you still live your life, and then you... How good if I tell them about you? There might be a chance. But now, tak ada chance. You nak cakap apa dekat kubur? You can! And this is exactly talking about what our problem today. Kita tak nak sakitkan hati mereka, but we don't want to tell them the truth. We have the medicine. She tau, tau we, La ilaha illallah. Untuk kira dia syirik. They accept or not accept. It's none of your business. Bukan saya kata. Allah kata. Surah Agosya, Surah 88, Ayat 21, 22. Fazakir, Inna ma'anta muzakir. Lasta alaihi bi musaitir. Berilah amaran. Sesungguhnya tugas kamu hanyalah memberi amaran dan kamu tidak diberi kuasa. You are not being given any authority to change people. It's not your right. It's Allah punya right. No. Kita nampak anak kita demam yang boleh sembuh. Demam panas. You, you tahu tak? Demam panas ni. If you tak bagi dia cure cepat, dia tak subside dia punya kepanasan dia tu, dia akan kena stroke tau. And you gonna suffer forever. Sebab dia tak tak boleh gerak. Why? Because tak perlah. No, sometimes tuan-tuan perempuan, we have to tell the fact. Kita kena bagi tahu. Just bagi tahu simple je. You know? I don't want to share with you how I do double to my mom, to my family. As a reverse, saya lagi susah tau. It's easier for you to talk to your friends that do not live with you. Sebab itu, perasaan tak, we as a human being, kita lebih kerap berkasar dengan family, okay, meninggikan suara dengan family, because we know family kita tak akan tinggalkan kita forever. So we take it for granted. Tetapi dengan orang luar, kita takut nak menyakitkan hati mereka sebab takut mereka tak nak berkawan dengan kita. It's always happen like that. Seorang suami, dia boleh berkasar dengan isteri, tinggikan suara dengan isteri, tapi dengan luar, dengan perempuan kat luar, pijak semua tak mati. And that's the fact. Itu api yang berlaku tuan-tuan perempuan. So, bila kita kata tuan-tuan perempuan, macam contoh saya dengan my, my family, my mom. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, my mom dah memulai Islam 2 years ago, bukan sebab saya hebat. But for me, it's like, whatever I share, I tak cakap, just theoretical, tak ada. I do, I do. Because, Tuan-Tuan Bapa, kalau I cakap dengan you all, I sendiri tak puas. Surah Sof, Surah 61, Ayat 2 dan 3, Allah kata, celakalah kepada orang yang cakap, tapi dia sendiri tak puas. Allah is talking to me. Straight to my face. So what do I do? You know, one thing, two years ago, that banyak tahun, actually my focus tak puas adalah kepada my dad, kepada bapak, bapak saya. Sebab so, bapak saya boleh terbuka, mak saya boleh diam. So then, as usual, in 2019, biasalah dia tahu, uh, for the past few years, memang after Hari Raya and Fitri, saya akan pergi overseas. So, my mom dah tanya lah, so what is your schedule after Raya? Sebab dia dah expect how many months I will not be in Malaysia. So, normally, saya akan 2-3 bulan akan overseas, dekat Afrika, dekat Latin, you know, pergi Hong Kong, pergi China, pergi other country untuk buat tak buat. So, saya kata, oh, saya bagi tahu lah, oh, lepas saya akan pergi ke Afrika 2019, pergi Tanzania dan sebagainya. Ah, akhir tahun saya akan pergi Arab Saudi. Saya tak mahu cakap umrah. Sebab dia tak faham. So, saya cakap pergi Arab Saudi. Yang lain-lain itu dia faham. Dia kata, pergi Arab Saudi itu buat apa? Bukan kali itu ramai sudah muslim. Dia pun tahu. Saya kata, oh, pergi Arab Saudi itu, terpaksa lah juga saya cakap Arab. Pergi umrah. Umrah tu saya jelaskan lah dalam bahasa Cina secara simple untuk dia faham lah. Okay? And then what do I do? I say, Kak, nak pergi tak? Nak? Okay? Mak, tapi you, hanya orang Islam saja boleh masuk. Dia pun, oh, tak cakap apalah. Tak apalah, dia. Ada conversation kami yang lain. 
I told my mom very seriously. This is my own mom. Saya so, kata dengan dia, Mak, I love you as my mom in this world. And I hope you will become my mom. Of course, kami cakap Cantonese lah. Kan nanti saya cakap Cantonese, tak ada sokong saya pula ke bawah ni. Saya <laughs> cakap, I love you as my mom in this world. And I hope you will become my mom in paradise. Mak, mak tak ada kata, Mak saya ni cepat touching. So, dia kata, Mak pun sangat suka. You know, that I will become your mom in paradise. And you become my son in paradise. And you know what next? Saya kata dengan dia, tapi mak, mak tak boleh masuk syurga kalau mak baik sah. Tough tak? Tough kan? You're talking to your own mom tau. Of course, if let's say you are not a river, then it's very difficult kan? Takkan you nak meneraka ke mak bapak sendiri kan? But this is exactly what I told them. You know what I told them? Walaupun I tahu kemungkinan mak saya akan marah, kemungkinan mak saya akan terasa. Sebab apa? Because I don't want to miss the opportunity. Semasa dia masih hidup. Dan kemudian dia dia. Dia dia. Dia tak, dia tak marah. I was surprised dia tak marah. Actually, I expect dia marah. <laughs> I expect dia marah. Tapi I just say whatever I need to say. I need to say bukan whatever I want to say. Whatever I need to say. Apa yang dia tahu? And then 2008, I tanya lagi. I lepas balik daripada, daripada Melbourne. Okay. I tanya dia lagi. Mak, hari tu mak kata nak pergi Saudi. Nak ke tak nak ni? I casual. Nak lah. Tapi mak, hanya untuk orang Islam. Lepas tu dia kata, Ah, okey lah. Dan hati saya, dia ni okey lah tu. You know, it's like, like for example, you, kita yang dah berkahwin, dia bila kita tanya bini kita, eh? eh, perempuan betul tak? Some, sometimes, perempuan dia akan bagi jawapan, and sometimes lelaki pun macam tu. Bila kita tanya, ya, nak makan apa ni? Ya? Nasi ke mi? Ah, okey lah. Suka. Nasi ke mi? Kau bila bawa pergi makan mi goreng? Lah, kenapa abang bawa pergi makan mi goreng? Dan tadi dia cakap, okey lah. Dan lalu, Too many question, too many question. Dia punya okay lah tu is not qualified yet. Yes. Dia, dia nak masuk Islam ke tak nak ni? Dia nak pergi ke tak nak ni? What should I do next? I ask tak? Okay lah kan? Kata, Mak, okay lah apa? Okay lah nak pergi umrah dan masuk Islam? Ataupun okay lah tak nak pergi? <laughs> dia kata, okay lah masuk Islam lah. Dia kata, Mak bila nak buat? Suka hati you lah. Suka hati lah. Hari ni sekarang juga. <laughs> Lepas tu dia kata, hari tu rabu. Uh, no, Khamis Lepas tu, kata oh. Esok lah, Jumaat, terus buat wow. Dia kata ah, Okey lah, tapi the next morning Dia kata, saya rasa macam tak nak pergi lah <laughs> You all ingat Syahadah tu sebenarnya nak cakap push on. It's because my dad, my mom, my wife, my other sibling tak bagi Dia tak bagi So, dia kata, mak apa ni? Saya guna emo lah Dia kata, apa ni? Dia nak masuk sugar ke tak nak ni? Oh, Bayangkan, tuan-tuan perempuan, apa yang saya kongsi ni Bukan kata, oh, profil dia okey lah, boleh lah Dia pandai bercakap, no Tuan-tuan perempuan, sometimes, bukan sebab dia pandai bercakap tau Tapi because of the sincerity in your speech Alhamdulillah, dia mahu menurut Islam And semua abang-abang, abang saya, kakak saya, bapa saya Mereka tahu saya buat dakwah Mereka tahu saya ajak orang masuk Islam Dan kalau ada kawan mereka minat dengan Islam Mereka akan bagi kepada saya As simple as that Jadi contoh yang perempuan Apa kesimpulan saya nak berikan Masa berlalu dengan cepat Sebab kita buat share Contoh yang perempuan Amat maruf dan imunkan Ini hanya empat perkataan Tetapi by us Doing all these things Fulfill the obligation InsyaAllah Kita akan dimuliakan oleh Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Dan ingat Bila Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala muliakan kita Siapa yang dimuliakan Allah tidak akan sesekali terhina Sesiapa yang Allah Pilih untuk dihina Tak ada siapa yang akan mulakan dia Abu Lahab ada siapa mulakan dia Tak ada Tetapi Tuan-tuan perempuan hari ini Orang yang buat azan dekat masjid Kita panggil apa? Bilal Wahab Wazim Tapi bagaimana Allah mulakan Bilal Orang ingat nama Bilal Walaupun dia kulit hitam Walaupun dia pernah jadi hamba tapi Allah muliakan dia hari ini Kita mungkin ada anak kita pun nak orang ini lah Macam mana Allah muliakan dia? Tuan dan perempuan Biarlah orang hina kita kat dunia Tapi kita mulia di sisi Allah di akhirat Dengan melakukan apa yang Allah kata Dia akan muliakan sesiapa yang buat kerja ini Iaitu amal makruf, nahi muka dan beriman kepada Allah Yang last tu kita dah ada Now, is on you Amal makruf, nahi muka Dan jangan lupa tuan dan perempuan Do your best and let Allah 
do the rest Allah tidak akan membebankan kita Lebih apa yang kita mampu You are doing not to answer to me You are doing it not to answer to your wife To your husband, no You are doing it in order for you to have a good answer Right in front of Allah That Allah, I have done my part I have done my best You know this is the best that I can do You know that Kat dunia kita boleh tipu orang Surah Al-Baqarah, surah yang kedua Ayat 286 لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسها الله سبحانه وتعالى تدا أكمل بربان كان سؤر الحمدية بلبي أبيه دمامه when Allah dah command kita untuk buat dakwah untuk buat amal makruh naik muka maksudnya Allah tahu in each and every one of us we can do it we can do it how much do your best as in what jadi insya Allah kita akan buat harap perkongsian saya yang ringkas ini dapat memberikan sedikit motivasi kepada kita untuk reflect dalam keadaan apa kita nak berjumpa dengan Allah dalam keadaan kita ada jawapan dengan Allah dan dalam keadaan kita dimulihkan oleh Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala insyaAllah jadi dengan itu kita buka sedikit jika ada beberapa minit untuk kalau tuan-tuan perempuan ada yang nak bertanya soalan ataupun saya yang tanya anda yang menjawab Silakan tuan-tuan perempuan kalau ada soalan Boleh dia tanya apa-apa Boleh tanya tapi tak semasa saya jawab lah Okay silakan Penyokong have you Assalamualaikum Assalamualaikum I like that point you make where everyone can start berdakwah To a certain point What I see right now Ramai yang cuba tapi yang Kebanyakannya tak ada elemen ihsan, tak ada elemen berkasih sayang. It's more like, oh, just because I want to get to jannah, I buat dawah. How I buat dawah? It's up to me. You understand? So, what would you advise us as the young ones? So, you're saying how to? In that way. How how would we approach? What's the best approach to go work? Okay, thank you so much. Can I get your name, sir? Uh, Wafa, Muhammad Wafa. Muhammad Wafa. Muhammad Wafa. Okay, okay. So, uh, Muhammad Wafa is asking that, you know, uh, a lot of people are starting. They are starting to do dawah. But sometimes what he saw is that the lack of Esan. You know, I want to do dawah regardless of how I do dawah. I just want to go to Jannah. So what? It's my advice to do some of you who are young. Okay, to do some of you who are young in dakwah maybe, okay? Okay, but I think in in terms of Islam, I'm among the youngest lah, kan? Okay, I'm only 16 years old, kan? So you all are graduate lah, kan? Okay, I baru tingkat empat, baru habis PT3. Okay, so what is my advice? Now, this advice is not only for you guys, it's also for me. Now, Islam is a perfection. Perfections in terms of ihsan also means mercy. Okay, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala mentioned in the Quran, in Surah Al Ibran, chapter three, verse 159, that you should do ihsan. If it's not because you are ihsan, you are being merciful to them, they might have run away. Okay, and this coincides with another verse from Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala in Surah An Nahl, chapter number sixteen, verse 125, Udu ila sabili robika bil hikma. Wamau izati hasan, wajadi hubila dihiasan. Invite people to the way of dialogue with wisdom and with beautiful speech, and debate with them in the best of manners. In the Quran, in Surah Toha, chapter twenty, Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala commanded Musa alaihi salam to talk to Firawn, the tyrant, and yet Allah commanded Musa to what? Since he's a tyrant, you have to be harsh. No. Allah says, speak to him gently. Now, just imagine, Musa have to speak to Firaun, which is tyrant, yet Allah command him to be gentle. Any of our prospect is Firaun? Cannot answer. It's it's like it's like the Malaysian ouch terasa right no having said so the default you know like original setting the factory setting the default is you have to be merciful you have to use beautiful speech 
But we have to understand when we talk about wisdom, wisdom is not merely about in Malay they say lembut. Sometimes you too lembut, it becomes lemah. Therefore, lemah lembut. But tolak ansur, tolerate, is good. But the problem is sometimes it's not about tolak ansur. Sometimes you are being ditolak beransur ansur. <laughs> there, there is a time and space for everything. Wisdom, you know, it's like saying certain words, you know. You have to say it. It's not about what you say. It's about when you say and who you say and how you say it. You get my point? So in that one, we have to use beautiful speech. When we say beautiful speech, doesn't mean you have to be like flowery, berbunga, bunga. No, it's not. Sometimes very direct, very simple, easy to understand. But sometimes you have to be firm. No mean no. Yes, you mean yes. Oh, can we negotiate bro, bro, bro? No, coming, coming Christmas, bro. No, can you wear Santa Claus uh, hat? Thank you. You know, we wish you happy holiday. But for me, I don't wear all those things. Allah, bro. You know, Raya, I can wear Songkok, what? I can wear Bajum, Melayu. Why can't you wear the same like us? <coughs> if, let's say, they continue to press further, we say, you know, respect. It's not about what we have to do, what other people are doing. Toleration is not about I have to involve and get involved with what you do and you have to get involved with what I do. Toleration is to and respect is about I respect your right to practice whatever you want to practice. I respect your right to okay believe in whatever you want to believe. And likewise, go both way. But if they press further, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is given us a very clear instruction. When Al Wali in the Mugira came to the Prophet to negotiate about Ya Muhammad, you worship our God for one month, you worship Allah for one month. Okay, one year, one year. Good deal, good deal. Allah, this guy, Allah's You know? To keep the peace and harmony in our society because of you, Muhammad, you know, our society has disunited, you know, because of you. What Allah did? Allah reviews Surah al kafir And the last thing is that, you know, Lakum dinukum waliyadi. Firm! There is a time you have to be firm. There is a time for everything. Not every time. You see, brothers and sisters, firm doesn't mean you have to use harsh words. We have to differentiate between vulgarity, insult, no. Swearing, no. That is no, no in Islam. There is no no in Islam. Some people might say, hey bro, you know, I'm coming from certain states. So it's, it's, quite, it's quite normal for us in that state, you know, to say bodo, manko, hayun. You know, that kind of thing. I say, sorry. Prophet Sallallahu said that he has been sent to perfect the characters to adapt the akhlaq of the Muslim. If you want to use that justification, you know, I'm coming from the state, so therefore it's very normal for us to use that word. I'm a Chinese, you know. <laughs> you know how Chinese work? Uh, yes. 18 generations. <laughs> 18 generations, you know. So can I use the justification coming here in Afin and using all the vulgar words and insult by saying, let me proceed. Why can I put I'm a Chinese man. I can't. Because I am already a Muslim. Muslim means I follow the religion. I don't follow the adat that goes against the religion. So, no. Harshness. Surah Fat, chapter 48, verse 28. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Those who follow Muhammad, okay, they will be merciful to among the believer and they will be harsh. Now, being firm, again, the kafir is not general. It's not everyone. It's like those who fight against you. Don't take the ayat and say, Oh, yeah, Allah say, so we have to follow and be firm and harsh to the kafir. No, no, no. When you go to the battlefield, orang nak bunuh you. Sani kau, kamala. Kita kawan, kawan. Salam, salam. No! Even the Prophet kata, when you reach the battlefield, what you have to do? You do stand like this. You stand like this. Why? To show your power. There is a time for everything. Tapi, Generally, default here, I don't know. Beautiful speech. Mercy. Good intonation. Lastly, to make us understand easier, in Islam, can we raise our voice against our parents? Yes or no? No. You sure? Sure? 100%? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> what would you do, for example, if your parents is crossing the road? And there's a lorry, lorry hantu. Of course, then you shout. No, 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 you cannot. Okay. You just say cannot. <laughs> so what you do during that time? You, you have to, you know, lower down your voice. No, 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 Right? Right? That's, that's how you do it, right? No! This is 
our problem we take religion bit part bit part and take it out of context and then think oh this is religion no you have to look at in totality there are time and place there is a context for everything right. sometimes can you raise your voice yes for sure when you want to read from something did the prophet ever shout ever yell yes during khutbah his face was red did the prophet you know command the, pro the, the companion what the companion with his face red with a higher voice higher tone yes he did the most special prophet is calm, calm, relax, smiling, mercy. So all these things, it comes along with experience. It comes along with experience. The happy experience will not come to you if you don't get involved. Just like you wish to know how to swim. But if you just keep on watching Olympic swimming, you will jump into the pool. <laughs> so I hope I answered the question. Thank you. So it's six... Uh, Five so I think from the sister side, any? Uh, yeah? Okay. Uh, uh, yes. Uh, uh, just one, uh, it's not a question. I think uh, uh, I need you to share something in terms of the, to maximize the time. Yes. Uh, uh, for you, from your comfort up to your now what you are, you know, speaker. Muslim speaker. So, how do you maximize the time? Maximize the time not just because you want to that one, to us as a corporate figure over here, some of us. So, how to maximize the time? Untuk berdakwah juga. Alright? So, in due respect, mostly uh, I, I do follow Hussein Yi. Yes. Because how to maximize the time from the convert to be a Muslim and then up to the stage of the, they become berdakwah. The journey they took to understand, to, to become puppies, puppies and so on. So, in this context, we got trying to relate with the Sun Muslim over here. How to maximize the time? Work is work. Quran is Quran. That one is that one. So, to maximize this. Okay. I, I didn't ask them to work the before by seven. <laughs> And this is a sharing in terms of your convert to you after the journey now, the time that you have taken to be like this, and we at the office here, the time that we taken, we are not contribute to the dakwah, we are some of us main once a week, but the Quran that we not believe for one but they are not missing my time. Okay. Go back to the club, tired, smayam, doom, tido. So, this is a uh, happen. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. Uh, it's been 16 years that I've become Muslim, alhamdulillah, or by the grace of Allah, since 2005. And uh, just for your information, normally I don't share, uh, but I just share. Because if they say I personally share, people will think, oh, I'm boasting. No, I'm not. Um, in fact, before I went into full time, that was, okay, uh, I was a senior account manager in a public listed company. As I mean, senior account manager, but not doing account, but uh, I involved in sales, corporate sales, and I think it's one of my clients, and that's where I get to know Fred Osto, okay, and he's uh, the deputy CEO of Afin Islamic, okay, so that's where I get to know, and, I, and ever since, Afin has been a very strong supporter of our Dawa uh, as an NGO, okay, <coughs> so coming back, uh, I've been in corporate, and then uh, when I was in corporate, I, I, we know exactly the kind of you know, the timetable in corporate, okay? Well, and, and sometimes, especially in, in our organization, which is, uh, we have few offices around Southeast Asia and in other parts of the, of the world. For us, as a Muslim, how do we maximize? To be honest, when I first joined them, uh, I'm just a common Muslim. How, do I, how common am I? Um, I don't know articles of faith. I don't know pillar of Islam. But I pray, I fast, and then, that's where I went, I met uh, Sheikh Husseini for the first time in 2011. I still remember the time, the date, 2011. And then I attended his talk, and then that's where I start. And in which he encouraged us to learn and study and do that work. My question is almost uh, quite identical to yours, actually. Because during the time I was in corporate, so I asked him, Sheikh, you keep on asking us to do that work. You know, how to be balanced, you know, what should we do? I am a revert, you know, I don't know how to do that work. And I even give, give a very good excuse that I hope he cannot refute me. And I say, I'm, I'm a Mu'alaf. During that time, I only become Muslim for six years. So, Mu'alaf. I'm a Mu'alaf. Why a Mu'alaf like me have to do Dawah when a lot of people who are born Muslim, they're not doing it? Ouch, right? Yes? So, that's my excuse.
So you say, Fidos, you don't do it because people do it or because, because people don't do it. You are doing it to prepare yourself for an answer in front of Allah. Those who do not do it, they have to answer in front of Allah. So coming back to how to maximize. Then along the way I learned. Uh, basically for us in corporate, we have a certain timetable. Uh, very rare that during weekend you guys have to report for work because Corporate being corporate, unless you work in a Chinaman company, different. It's really 24 7, really have to be a call. Okay? <laughs> 24 7. But like in corporate, you have a very fixed kind of time time timetable. Time okay, 9 to 6, and then you have a fixed time of 1 to 2, okay, etc. And you have to come to work. Now, it's actually, it's, the time remains the same, but it's the way how much we're willing to change our intention first. It starts with our intention. Do you want to learn? Do you want to learn? Do you want to study? Do you want to practice? Do you want to understand the deen better? You have to ask yourself first. Nobody can force you. And for me personally, I have made the change. I want to make the change. I intend, oh, I said, wow. Just by listening to his lecture for one hour, make me amazed. Wow, so easy. So simple. How I wish I can be like him. You know, during that time, I was like, but I think, too far, man. <laughs> too far, too far. You know, he's a sheikh. So, then from there, I changed. My lifestyle is still the same. My journey to the office from K from, from Kapong to Klanet Jaya during peak hour before PKP, you're talking about 2011-2012, is like at least 45 minutes, water net, normal. As a salesperson, sometimes we don't have to go in, but I still go in, okay? So that 45 minutes, normally what do we do in the car? What do we do? I'm not asking you guys to change the route, eh? or taking a helicopter, eh? no. <laughs> continue with the same route, continue with the same route, just change the routine, you know? In terms of Olympic performance, the coach is not there to train the athlete to improve their performance by 100%. No. Just by 1%. You know that 1% can create world records. The power of 1%. The power of 1%. For example, what do we normally do in the car while we are driving and we start in the gym? Racing. Huh? Racing? Racing. Racing. Subhanallah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, no, no. Okay, I always remember. I, I, I used to be in that position. Sometimes I used to start, but before you start to curse, right? Okay, when you curse, you're getting headache, you're getting stressed, and it's. Ugh. Okay, let me ask you. After you got all the stress, are you still stuck in the Yeah. So why curse then? Look, why, why curse? Right? You, you won't change by cursing. You tell me, bro, sis. If that, please tell me a formula. If by cursing you can change the situation, I will do it now. <laughs> I'm willing to curse. By cursing, suddenly, you know, like there is a, the, the police escort will come and you open the road for you. I will do it now. <laughs> but you know what? The moment you do it and that work, everybody will start to do it and you start in the same, same traffic jam. <laughs> Go back to the same way. So the same rules apply, the same principle apply. So what do we do? What do I do last time? Okay, I know roughly around 45 minutes, so what do I do? Now no more have no more CD. You have to use USB and sometimes you have the Wi-Fi, right? Yeah. So what do I do? MashaAllah. I I start to end just stuck in the traffic jam. And sometimes I hope it will last one hour. So huh? <laughs> traffic jam one hour? Yes! You will start to enjoy because you no longer feel you're stuck in the jam. Okay. Before BKP, do we actually market cooler? Very rare. Right? Very rare. So what do we do? We don't even attend one lecture per day. You know what? By changing that lifestyle, inshallah, you can listen at least one and a half to two lectures a day. 45 minutes, I start in a jam, I put my USB. Last time I just drive in the country. Right? I don't have big cars, so I drive in the country. You know? And I, might, I drive my hours out. So I just put my MP3. I listen to lectures. Series, huh? Series. Okay? I learned about the Sirah of the Prophet, I learned about the hereafter, I learned about the Quran. So it's like, I'm listening. So sometimes, when I reach the parking, what do I do? I don't go up to the office first. I finish that series first. I finish that one hour first. And then you just imagine, I go in, so few motivated listening to the lectures, and then, <coughs> go back, okay, I listen to another lecture. How many lectures really, brother and sister? Khalas! <laughs> Even you don't, of course, the best if you can attend in mosque, even if you don't go to the mosque and attend Kule Maghrib, two hours you have already spent. Rather than that two hours you spent cursing for as long <laughs> <laughs> two, two hours of cursing, you get high blood pressure. 
Okay, you have to enter into hospital and then you have to fork up your money, all those, and you don't get pahala, you get dosa. Okay, you get dosa. But now by listening to lectures, mashallah, it's like, wow, wow, wow. And then how you can remember all those things, when you listen, you have to put an intention. It's all coming to intention. I realize that when you do put the intention, it will be very difficult for you to remember. Remember, brother and sister, how many times you have listened to a lectures and you can't remember nothing? You remember nothing. You are just there physically, but the mind is wandering around. But by you putting intention, okay, after I learn this, if I go to the office, you know, during lunchtime, blah, 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 I might say, hey, bro, hari ni kan, who does not do that? No, you started to, it's like, is it? Yeah, oh, amazing, bro, amazing. And just imagine, you first say you talk to him, and hey, kau dengar kuliah apa? Tak apa, tak apa, aku burn USB tu, aku beli, 29 ringgit ni, aku beli. Aku transfer semua bagi kau. Hey, bro, he get the pahala, man. you get the pahala. And then they do not be cheated all the It becomes, it's not MLM, it's ULM, unlimited marketing. You already started your dawah, right? You just imagine while you are sleeping, this friend is listening to Kulia and you are getting all the reward, and mashallah. Not only that, you go back and you want to share with your wife, you with your spouse, with your children. And then you are doing dawah, and then you are getting them to listen. For example, even when I was traveling, you know, with my wife, with my children, I was switch on Kulia. When I switch on Kulia, Surprisingly, you know, surprisingly, this is our indirect power to our family members. Normally, we will open you know, DVD, uh, movies, or music, radio, right? And sometimes, some, I mean, sorry to say, it's lots of radio, you know, they laugh, they create the joke, and then end up they laugh, and we don't even know what they're laughing about. Okay? So, no problem. I switch on the radio, play some, you know, lectures, and then my son will ask me, my children will ask me, Ask me related to the lecture. We thought they are playing with their phone and not listening, but they are paying attention. They are paying attention. If let's say that lecture is one hour, they only get five minutes, isn't that good enough? Would they listen to you five minutes talking about religion? No. No. You use somebody else to talk about it. Like for example, sometimes I will talk about, I will play, I will purposely, when I know my children, I will purposely talk about you. I will choose certain topic about them, about your own kiyama, you know, to instill fear in them. But in the same time, I will put some balance by talking about hope. So I will select the lectures and then do it. And then you know what? You want to memorize certain surah in the Quran? Don't start with surah Makara. Go play with Juz Amma. Keep on repeating it, repeating it. Just like, you know, sometimes we, without looking at the lyric, we can memorize the song, right? Just listening to the beat, right? Choose your best chord. Which chord you like? You just keep on repeating, 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 repeating. Inshallah, you repeat for few days, for one month. If you cannot memorize, something wrong with the player. <laughs> because he's not playing. I mean, just... Simple example, imagine, you know, if you keep on passing by a, a place, okay, and let's say, la la, huh? very high, very tall. Now, if every day you pass by, what could happen? There will be a path. If there is no path, meaning you are not striped, you are not using it every day. But when you use it every day, bro, inshallah. Next year, when, if let's say you guys want to invite me back and you guys doing all these things, you guys will say, Brother, it works, huh? You know, last time I cannot remember all this surah, but now you know, mashallah, I can remember. And sometimes at home, just take the Quran, just take the Quran if you want to become the Imam, then you just read from there. And then your children, Pa, put the Quran there, but that's what, no problem, okay. Oh, then you give them confidence to, you make it. You see, like, like a spring chicken. Spring chicken is not big anyway. Can you just swallow it? No. You have to cut it into pieces. Right? Likewise, learning religion. Don't start with the biggest and the most difficult thing. Start with the most easier and build that interest in you. And you will find it out. Wow. You know, one day when you don't read, huh, you will feel like I'm easy. You know, zaman zaman, let's talk about. Zaman zaman sebelum on the phone. Yang macam ni. You know, we don't talk about Nokia. We don't bring our Nokia into the toilet, okay? Right? Anyone of you doing? And that's how you see the boy. Okay? Now, sometimes it's a sakit perut sana. We have a habit of bringing a newspaper or magazine. Right? Now, when one day you are not reading newspaper, what will, what will you do? Even how tired you are, you will try to glance something. You will try to read something because you already used to it. It already become part of your life, right? 
Bila nak masuk toilet, you tengah sakit perut pemula sangat ni. What do you do? You immediately go to the toilet? No! You will not fall. Mana newspaper? Mana newspaper? That's why you, whenever you go to toilet, you will find there is a newspaper on top. <laughs> tak tahu siapa tinggal kan? <laughs> tak kisah lah. There is something, jadi ada newspaper dekat atas, right? No. Brother and sister, it's exactly like this. You build that kind of interest where you develop the love to learn, inshallah. You will find it. Just go bit by bit. Don't try to take a leap. Don't try to run. Slowly but surely. Inshallah. Do not think it's impossible. Take up the impossible, separate the I am, and put one apostrophe in between I and M, it becomes impossible. So it's easy. Break it down. Easy. Set a realistic goal. And then move forward. Inshallah. Don't talk about next year. In one month time, if you start practice later, even Allah bro, they cut your eyes, bro, make it even So what? 10-15 minutes if you listen to a lecture, tak habis, so what? Esok sambung lah. Tapi, you get the 10-15 minutes ready then you are getting nothing in. It's not about how long, one hour. No, 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 no. 10-15 minutes pun jadi. You have a lot of short lectures. Eh? Di mana ada <laughs> cari rumah jauh sikit. <laughs> Lebih baik you tawaf saya berjaya. <laughs> rumah sebelah dia tawaf dulu. Kan? Abang, kenapa lambat? Sebab abang tawaf dulu nak dengar habis kuliah. <laughs> okay? So, that, that is one of the way which is uh, easier shop. Cari satu lagi rumah. Itu lah yang dengar aku. Okay? So, brother and sister, thank you so much uh, for your time and attention. Thank you so much for all the questions. And uh, dekat luar tu, kami ada sediakan buff dakwah. Boleh ambil bahan dakwah percuma. You know, it's for free. Take whatever you need, whatever you want. Uh, tak cukup, minta lagi. We also have Quran. Okay? Uh, free. Not for you. The Quran, you can take it. And then you can share it with your friend. Okay? Bagi kepada kawan yang berumur Muslim. Uh, no problem. No payment needed lah. Just take it. Uh, cuma meja tu, you all punya, jangan ambil balik lah. Because <laughs> <laughs> you can get it. And of course, we are so open for like investment for Akhira. If you guys want to make a monthly contribution of 1 ringgit, 5 ringgit, you know, uh, our volunteers is out there to assist you. So, once again, Jazakumullah Karan, Subhanahu wa bihamdika, Ashadu la ilaha illa anta wa astafruka, wa atubu ilaik. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Anta wa Oh